Warrior Island. On a mysterious island, grandmasters of martial arts train 16 fighters from around the world. The fighters train and fight for your vote, and you help decide their fate by voting online. Who will become the ultimate island warrior? Where great warriors are discovered and fans have a voice. Welcome to Warrior Island. We are here live at Warrior Island, and tonight, for the first time in history, you, the fans, get a voice and help decide which fighters get to come to Warrior Island and train with the masters and grandmasters of martial arts to compete to become the ultimate island warrior. That's right, fans. For the very first time, you at home get to go onto your social media, watch these fights on your television. You're gonna watch the fights. Find your favorite fighter and vote for that fighter up to 10 times on the Warrior Island Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, on the warriorisland.info. Get in there and vote for your favorite fighters because these fighters are gonna fight as hard as they can as warriors to get your vote to come to the island. The 16 winners will travel to the island. They will train with the Grand Masters of Martial Arts. Ron Van Cleef, the Black Dragon, Dan the Beast Severn, UFC veteran, um, Orlando Rivera, Henzo Gracie, Helsing Gracie, Sifu Chow, Sifu Lao. I mean, the list goes on of some of the greatest wow. grandmasters of martial arts and fight coaches in the world. And they're going to fight on the island and train on the island, not in a cage, not in a sound studio, but in the, in the sand, in the water, in the jungle, mountains, caves. It's real warriors who have to fight no matter where they are. But more importantly than the fighting, they have to learn character, to be a good person, learn the, the tiki code, to learn respect, honor, empathy, integrity, all the things that a real world warrior should have. You've been given the ability to fight, to be a warrior, use it for good, not for evil. Yeah, anybody who has followed martial arts for any amount of time will know that the names that Ronan James Jefferson just mentioned are the best in the world. I've known you for a long time, James Jefferson, for well over 10 years. When you told me about the idea for Warrior Island, the first thing that came to mind is this is a winner. Absolutely, we're gonna go, we went to venues all around the world. We found um, some of the great promotions, we found some of the great fighters. We, we filmed these fighters for you. Now you're gonna get to vote, vote for them um, watching the fights tonight. So every Saturday at 10 p.m. you'll tune into the Warrior Island Fight Night and you're gonna watch and get excited about getting these fighters onto the island. So tell us a little bit about what people can actually see when they actually tune into Warrior Island. What's the first thing they'll see as the show develops? Well, on the fight night, you're going to see uh, you know three, four really good fights every fight night. But then when these fighters get voted on by you to come to the island, they'll arrive by boat. They'll come onto the island, have to show respect to the Grand Masters. Then right out of the get-go, they're going to be training. They're going to be dieting. They're going to be uh, learning the, all this code to be, for the better character. And all along, you as the fans on the on the Warrior Island show are going to give them more more things, like maybe more rest, more nutrition, more protein, maybe a massage. If they don't earn your respect, if they're not showing good character, we might wake them up in the middle of the night, give them a little bit less water, less protein. So they have to earn uh, all these different things, kind of like you know some of these movies out there, like uh, Death Race or uh, Hunger Games. So some of that great stuff, but it's going to be real life with real Real fighters and not in a cage, not in a sound stage, on a real island and real fighting. You know, you mentioned something earlier that I think is so important to drill down a little bit on, and that is the respect. You know, I've been very fortunate to be commentating fights for almost 20 years now. When I talk to the fighters and we go aside and we get them to, to become uh, you know, a little more forthright, they start telling me a little bit about their lives. Martial arts, not just helps keep them out of trouble, right, right, right. keep them out of jail. They actually say it saved my life. The happiness, the moving with the body, it gives them a place to channel their energy in a good form rather than in a bad way. Absolutely, so tonight you're gonna see that. You're gonna see fighters fighting and they're fighting for you. So it might not be the winner you vote for. You may vote for the loser because that person showed better heart, right. better spirit, right. desire, good character, and then they'll develop better fighting skills with the grandmasters that we mentioned. And real quickly, as we get out, the other important element here that has never been done in the history of martial arts content and martial arts television, you, the fan, actually get to have a voice for the first time. This is an interactive show. The fans actually get to tell you who stays and who doesn't stay on the island. It's amazing. So you have to watch the fights tonight. You have to vote. You know, don't wait. 
be in interactive and, and have a voice. So where great warriors are discovered and you, the fan, have a voice. All I can think to do now is go watch some great fights. Can we go see Let's some go. fights? Let's go to the fight. Let's hit it. Warning, the following TV show contains combative sports scenes that some viewers may find disturbing. While we are working with these warriors to teach them the tiki code, it's a process. Viewer discretion is advised. Enjoy, and don't forget to vote for your favorite fighter at warriorisland.info. That's warriorisland.info. back to Warrior Island Fight Night, everybody. I'm Jordan J. Adams, your Warrior Island commentator, getting a good look now at Sean Huffman, fighting out of Bettendorf, Iowa. He is 19 and 22. As a pro, 38 years old, stands five foot eight. He's trying to get back into the win column. He's coming off a bit of a slide, five losses in a row. His last loss to Kevin Morris. He is a, a good journeyman, though. Very good in submissions. Got a good wrestling background. Pretty much hang your hat on someone being a good wrestler when they come out of Bettendorf, Iowa. Most of his wins are submissions and decisions. And you're getting a good look right now at the beautiful Casino Estoriel. Portugal, Estoril, Portugal. And there you see the stats. That's five foot eight when you make the conversion and 170 pounds. That's the welterweight division. Now getting his final equipment check from Team Huffman. Wrapping up the gloves now with the tape, making sure that they are secure. Don't forget, Warrior Island Fight Night is a place where fans have a voice and great warriors are discovered. Fights from around the globe with fighters from all styles of combat. Warriors from USA, Russia, United Kingdom, Portugal, Canada, and more. We're gonna be talking a little bit about fighter tryouts, how you can send your two minute tryout video to us in just a little bit. Sean Huffman steps into the cage. He will now meet his opponent on the night. Vitor 
Vitor Nobrega. Fighting out of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Five foot 11, 32 years old. And there you see the stats on the Brazilian. Originally from Rio, now fighting out of Lisboa, Portugal. Submission specialist. Most of his wins are by means of the submission. There you see the metrics on him. Five foot 11, 170 pounds. Now taking his shirt off and getting his equipment check. His last fight was a loss to Damian Maluski. It was a split decision lost in Fighters Arena. And that puts him squarely at 12 and six. Stepping into our cage here tonight in beautiful Estoril, Portugal. You want to train with some of the best, some of the best grandmasters and coaches, then you're gonna to wanna to submit your two minute tryout for season two to tryout video, the fans decide at gmail.com. So the address to send your two minute tryout video is to the fans decide at gmail.com. In the subject header, you would put tryout video. More about that later. Definitely visit us if you want to find out more about what we are doing on the island and how you can become one of the best on Warrior Island. You are watching Warrior Island Fight Night right now from Portugal. It's about to go down in the welterweight division. from our outstanding ring announcer here in Portugal. This fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds at 170. That's the welterweight division. Sean Huffman on the right-hand side of your screen in the red trunks. And Vitor Nobrega on the left-hand side of your screen in the white trunks trunks with black trim getting their final instructions from the referee here in Casino Estoril this should be a good one both of these welterweights Sean Huffman and Vitor Nobrega coming off losses so both are going to be very determined and very ferocious inside the cage here to start this welterweight match Warrior Island Fight Night. Who wants it more? Round number one. Here we go. Round one. Break a light on his feet. Already up on his toes. Circling to his left. Huffman's kind of plodding in. Now Huffman's starting to wake up a little bit, getting a little active on his feet. Outside leg kick from the American. Again, Nobrega in the white and black, Huffman in the red. 
Right hand followed up by an outside leg kick from Nobrega. Nobrega now with the inside leg kick. Almost like Huffman might have thought it inadvertently hit the groin, but he seems to be okay. A little deep kick from Nobrega. Spinning back. Heel kick from the American. Who'd have thought that from the wrestler? Both of these welterweights feeling each other out. Cautious at first. Maintaining a respectful distance. Obrega has the height advantage. About three inch advantage, 5'11 for Nobrega versus the 5'8 American. I think both of these welterweights respect the ground game of the other. Nobrega knows Huffman brings wrestling. Now they clinch. And changing levels now as Nobrega down to the canvas goes Huffman. Side control now for the Brazilian. The Brazilian looking to pass. Right elbow now, right hands from the Brazilian. Doing good ground and pound work is Nobrega. Nobrega now thinking about taking the back. He's got to be careful about hitting the back of the head of Huffman. Just good, good solid ground work here. Slow and steady and methodical for Nobrega. Nobrega, these, these rabbit punches are not really meant to do any damage they're more to get him to make a mistake like that giving up the back now rear naked choke for the brazilian the brazilians tighten it up he's a submission specialist nobrega has got 80 percent of his wins from doing just that the rear naked choke taps out sean huffman making short and easy work of the american that is brazilian jiu-jitsu 101 the rear naked choke for feet toward Nobrega. Nobrega now will move on and move to 13 and 6. As a professional, Sean Huffman with his sixth loss in a row. He's got to be frustrated at this point. What does he have to do to come up with a win inside the steel cage? He drops to 19 and 23. So there you see the Rio de Janeiro native and now Sean Huffman, very dejected. Now the fighters giving each other respect. And good work there for the Brazilian, who again moves to 13 and six, looking to get on the island. These guys know who they will be trained by if they can advance in Warrior Island Fight Night. Getting trained by the likes of Ron Van Cleef, Dan Severn, Halson Gracie, Henzo Gracie, Sifu Chow, Orlando Rivera. And there you see him getting pictures taken with his team, Team No Brega, over to make it official inside the cage. Vitor Nobrega. Beautiful work there, moving to 13 and six, trying to get on the island. And let's see what he has to say right now.
This next one should be a great scrap at 185. It's a title fight in the middleweight division, getting a good look right there at Dustin all day long. He'll be fighting the Sean, the rock and roll of Burrell. Here you see how they match up on paper. Seven and two for Long, 14 and six for Nashawn. The big thing that jumps out at me here is the height and reach advantage for Dustin all day long. That's a six or seven inch reach advantage. Looks like a much bigger guy than Nishan Burrell, but we know how explosive the rock and roller is. The question is, can all day long keep Nishan off him? Can he use that jab? Can he use that reach advantage, that height advantage, to circle and stay outside of Nishan Burrell's power? We know how powerful Burrell is. 17 and 11, a lot of those 17 wins have come by means of the knockout at just 26 years old. So Dustin all day long there getting his final equipment check. Can he keep Nishan off him with that six or seven inch reach advantage? He's seven and two, 31 years old, fighting out of Johnson City, Tennessee, getting his final equipment check. Don't forget Warrior Island Fight Night is where fans have a voice and great warriors are discovered. Fights from around the globe with fighters from all styles of combat. Fighters from USA, Russia, warriors from United Kingdom, Portugal, Canada, and more. Definitely don't want to miss Warrior Island Fight Night. Fighter tryouts. If you want to try out, email your two minute video for season two to the fans decide at gmail.com. That's the fans decide at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject header, try out video. Look how tall all day long is when he steps into the cage. And now we see the rock and roller. Of course he has some headsets on. He's the rock and roller. 17 and 11, 26 years old. Weighed in at 184 pounds native of Philadelphia and fighting under the very capable tutelage of Mr. Daniel Gracie, a fantastic name in the sport of MMA up here in the Northeast. This one is for the 185 pound strap and to make their case to get onto the island. This has been an amazing series. What an enjoyable time we've all had here with Warrior Island Fight Night and the explosive 17 and 11 Nashawn, the rock and roller Burrell, now getting love from Team Burrell. And his final equipment safety check. We have been working on a comic book series for the past eight years and are excited to share it with you. 
buy a comic, save the world is a real thing. We teach bullies to become protectors instead of offenders. Our Warrior Island Tiki Code is the key. We've launched a coloring in activity adventure book for all ages to expand the series. You saw the belt there just a little bit earlier as we were telling you about our comic book series. Get us started, Stephen Peacock. And now, prepare to behold the highest heights of excellence in competitive combat sports, the main event. This title shot for the middleweight belt will be five rounds in five minutes, and Mr. Liam Kerrigan will be referee for this battle. Our first fighter is a 31-year-old who stands at six foot five and weighs 186 pounds. He has a 7-2 professional MMA record. He represents D Eagle and D3 MMA, hailing from Johnson City, Tennessee, out of the blue corner, Justin Hall. And his opponent is a 26-year-old who stands at 5 for 11 and is 104 pounds. He has a 14-6 professional MMA record. He represents Daniel Gracie, and he hails from Philadelphia in the red corner. The shot, the rock and roll, the this fight is scheduled for five five-minute rounds in the 185-pound division. Referee now getting the middleweights ready to go. Dustin all day long is on the left-hand side of your screen. He's in the white board shorts. Round one. Round one. You see that height difference straight away. Six foot five. Dustin all day long in the white Hayabusa board shorts. And Nashawn, the rock and roller Burrell in the black and red trunks. You can see the back. Look at the back of Nashawn. You want to see where that power comes from. Those traps and those delts. He's so explosive too. Big overhand right attempt there. Dustin's gonna have to be careful with that overhand right. There's a lot of power in the right hand of Nashawn Burrell. Coming in wisely with his hands up high. Dustin Long tries to go for the combination, but Nashawn beat him to the punch. Almost caught him with that spinning bag fist. Well, I should I take that back. It wasn't that close. <laughs> Nice left hand catches Nishan on the way in. And all day long is, is fighting Southpaw. I, I thought he was a orthodox fighter. Oh, caught that on the way in to the midsection. And now he goes back to orthodox. So he uh, obviously is ambidextrous, can fight orthodox and Southpaw as Burrell presses him up against the cage. This is a good place for Nishan. Get rid of that height advantage and the power. Try to keep this fight in a phone booth if he can. And nice and tight, working the body. Got the over-under. And now, all day long, trying to change levels. Back up against the cage goes Dustin Long. So Dustin Long with the over-under. Two minutes ticked away here in the first round. Keep in mind, this is a title fight at 185. Fighters are not only fighting to make their case to make it onto Warrior Island, but also fighting for soldiers here tonight. You see Dustin Long looked over at the referee, perhaps an inadvertent groin strike there by Nashawn, but he seems okay. I think he was trying to make the referee aware of it, and keep an eye on it. You get a height difference like that too, it's, it's um, more likely to get caught you can get caught in the groin on when a fighter's trying to work the midsection but your belt line is so much higher than the opponent very easy for the opponent to hit the groin accidentally still a little bit of a feeling out process outside leg kick for long long trying to stalk burrell but burrell is able to close the distance when he needs to i'm surprised long hasn't been sticking that jab out more regardless of whether it's an orthodox stance or a southpaw stance which he seems to be able to switch in and out of quite seamlessly he 
still needs to be sticking that jab out regardless of stance. He's letting Burrell close the distance whenever Burrell wants to. Shuffle jab there from Burrell, and now pressing long up against the cage, a flying knee. Little teep kick there from Long. Burrell with the outside leg kick. Burrell with the combination, another combination. Presses Long up against the cage. Burrell closing the distance when he needs to. A couple of nice shuffle jabs there. Good footwork from the rock and roller. Sean circling. To the right, now to the left. Not enough activity for Dustin all day long, in my opinion. Needs to be way more active with the jab. And needs to be throwing, just letting his hands go. More combinations, he's got the reach. He's waiting, he's reacting. And he's just covering up when Burrell, oh, beautiful combination, flying knee, oh. Long is in some trouble here. He shot the double, but he ended up getting mounted. Full mount now for Burrell. Raining punches down. It's over! Nashawn, the rock and roll of Burrell, finishes off Dustin all day long to put the 185-pound belt around his waist here tonight in Voorhees, New Jersey. An overzealous cage personnel Kind of all over, Nashawn didn't even let him celebrate. That is absolutely frustrating when these guys come in here and try to corner a happy fighter into their corner and gets right two inches away from him and doesn't even let him move around a little bit. Nashawn, the rock and roller of Burrell with a huge win, just wanted to celebrate a little bit. And that the overzealous, I'm not sure if they're commission personnel, whoever they were, didn't really let him celebrate the joy of the, of the moment. Here we go. From round number one, the opener, and that's all it took for Nishan. The Explosive combinations, the big right hand, that overhand hook hitting the side of the head. All day long was dazed, and all he could do was shoot the double, but he, it was an inadvertent shot that ended up putting him in the mount, and it didn't take many punches. The referee knew that Dustin Long was hurt. Referee was not gonna let him get more damage. He could not intelligently defend himself. That was good stoppage there by the referee. As you see, the new champ, Nashawn, the rock and roller Burrell, putting on the shirt. Warrior Island time, baby. Warrior Island Fight Night, I'm Jordan J. Adams. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Let's go cage side and make this championship fight official. This bout is stopped at four minutes and 40 seconds of the first round. The winner by referee stoppage, TKO came out of the red corner, the shot
Well said, champ. Fighters, email your two-minute tryout video for season two to thefansdecide at gmail.com. That's thefansdecide at gmail.com. Let's take a look at action from round number one. And you can see this was the beginning of the end for all day long. The big right hands. We knew that Burrell had power in that right hand. And the clubbing hand knocks all day long down to the canvas. He tried to pull the double leg, but he ended up getting mounted. And that was all it took for the referee. He saw a couple more punches from Burrell. And Nuff said congratulations to the new champion. He did a great job in there tonight. Now, Sean, the rock and roller, Burrell. Vote for your favorite fighter at warrioridland.info. All right, folks, first up, we have representing Elite Champions MMA coming out of the blue corner, Tadja Corcoran. And his opponent, who represents UFC Gym, comes out of the red corner, Jay Mar crowd loves Jay Mark, otherwise known as Jason Markland, who is actually two and one. Round one, here we go. Round one. This is a light heavyweight championship fight on the top of your screen. Jason Markland in the black trunks. On the right hand side of your screen, Taja Corcoran fighting out of the red corner has black trunks with Blue trim, their Muay Thai trunks. Nice switch kick there from Taja Corklin, fighting out of Elite Champions MMA. Taja's making his debut here tonight. Jason Marklin at two and one here tonight. The favorite, just by a little bit, by the odds makers. Jay Mark on the left-hand side of your screen. Takes a little while to warm up. He likes to measure his opponent. Starting the leg kicks now. Taja Corcoran, oh boy, both with spinning heel hooks and spinning kicks. Taja Corcoran is an exotic fighter as well. You can see with the spinning heel kick. Looks like both of these light heavyweights are content to stay on their feet and trade. Who walks, oh, nice left hand there. Stiff left jab, snaps Taja Corcoran's head back. Taja's gonna have to be careful closing the distance. J Mark has the height advantage and the reach advantage. See it right there in that stiff left jab. Taja Corklin, ill-advised, turning his back a lot. If he's gonna do any spinning heel kicks, or spinning kicks in general, he's gotta train himself not to turn his head like that. He's giving his back away to, the, to his opponent. In MMA, if Jay Mark wanted to, he could've taken his back and sunk in the rear naked choke. So, Taja Corcoran making his debut here tonight. This is a learning experience. Ah! Oh, it's a nasty knee to the face. The right eye of Taja Corcoran just got rocked. And I wouldn't be surprised if that right eye starts swelling up on him. And now the right kick to the left side of the face of Taja Corcoran. Corcoran is in a lot of trouble here, but boy, he ate that kick. He looks pretty clear. He's coming in again, though. But his approach in closing the distance is not working for him. I do like how he's keeping his right hand up nice and high, though. He's protecting 
that side of his face, the right hand side of his face, got rocked by the knee of Jason Marklin. Marklin now with the outside leg kick. Spinning back fist from Corcoran way too late. Corcoran having just fits closing the distance here at the end of round number one. Folks, don't forget fights air on June 19th on the DuPont Network at 8 p.m. on all smart TVs and streaming devices. There you see that knee in slow motion and Corcoran ate it. Here it is again from another angle. Watch the left side of Mark's body just snapping, turning his hips into that knee and you can see Corcoran holding the knee. You can vote for your favorite fighters up to 10 times per week for 15 weeks for you to send your favorite fighters to Warrior Island to train with Henzo Gracie, Ron Van Cleef, Dan Severn, Helson Gracie, the Navy Seals, and more. DuPont Network is a worldwide streaming company operated by One Family Media out of Atlanta, Georgia. You can get their programming in all smart devices and smart TVs. All right, here we go, round two. This fight scheduled for five three-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. I had to give that first round to J. Mark on the right-hand side of your screen, did more damage clearly. That big, oh, the right hand! The straight right hand from J. Mark. He tried to set up that left kick, but just missed it. Oh boy, Taja dodged a bullet. Boy, can he eat punches and kicks, because that's what he's doing here tonight. Another left hand! And a right, oh, the big left kick to the face. Taj is in all kinds of trouble. The right hook, the left knee, it is over. Jay Mark finishing off Taja Corcoran in short order in the second round. Oh my goodness. How dangerous is Jason Marklin at 205? Here it is again. Watch the right hand. He sets it up right here oh it's the big left kick and that was the beginning of the end for taja corcoran the left knee referee had seen enough and what a rude beginning to the mma career of taja corcoran who was making his debut here tonight oh wow jason marklin retaining the light heavyweight belt makes a huge case to make it on to warrior island wow I wonder what some of the trainers like Henzo Gracie and Ron Van Cleef and Dan Severn, Helson Gracie, the Navy SEALs, can do with someone like Jay Mark. Whoa! This is going to be a problem light heavyweight for quite some time to come. And there he is getting his love from his New York fans. He is the New York, New York native. And you heard that at the beginning of the fight. You heard how much everybody loved him. Don't forget, you can watch all of our Warrior Island action on all smart devices and smart TVs. DuPont Network is your worldwide streaming company operated by One Family Media. You can check them out at you know, Roku. Check them out at DuPontNow.com, Amazon.com. If you want to go to one aggregated area to watch your favorite fights, Go to warriorisland.info. All your information is right there. Let's go cage side and make this win official. All right, ladies and gentlemen, by technical knockout in the second round, 30 seconds into it, the winner comes out of the red corner, Jay Mark. And still, the 205 pound MMA champion, terrifying performance. Those hand kicks were brutal. Uh, food? You are now, without a doubt, one of the top fighters in ECF. Who do you want next? Food. He wants food. J Mark, ladies and gentlemen. That was a fantastic performance from both of our fighters. Let's give a round of applause for J-Mark. He's fought since the very first ECF show. We're now on ECF 14. Great job, everybody. Anything you want to add? Uh, Tiger, thank you very much for coming out. Tiger.
awesome performance. Tiger's a 185 fighter, stepped up to the 205 title fight. Great job. Uh, I just want to say thank you, Tiger, for coming and taking this fight, all right? Um, let's say, whoever's next, let's, that's it, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Chris. Right. Thank all right. you. Great. Thank you very much. Great job. We look forward to having you on in June. He will be defending his final in June, everybody. Let's give a round of applause for our light heavyweight title fight winner. Oh, what a great night of fights. You know, some real unexpected turnouts there, but everything was fantastic. And what character and heart these athletes showed out there tonight. Unbelievable. You know, sometimes you go into a fight and you look at, you know, check out these fighters. You got your favorite fighter. You think one's going to win, but it doesn't end up that way because sometimes, you know, you, know, you get a rear naked choke, you get a knockout, you just don't expect it. But you know, what you do though, you see these fighters, you see that they have more respect. Yes. We, we search out yes. the promotions around the world. We search out the fighters, the coaches, the dojos, of, of people that show the respect, the honor, the empathy of what it would take to come to Warrior Island, fighting for your voted home to get that vote, and then to go to Warrior Island, train with these masters, and that's what this is all about. So this week, this week you watch these fighters, you're gonna go vote for them. Hey, next week you might see another fighter, but it's all about you, the fans and the, the character of these fighters in the cage to bring them to Warrior Island. Yeah, you bring up a really good point there, James. For the fans at home who are watching and getting ready to vote, you don't necessarily have to vote for the winner of the fight. There may have been an athlete in there tonight that showed so much heart, showed so much character, that you actually want to vote for them, even though they may not have won their particular fight. Just based on their character, you're compelled to vote for them. It's a great point, you know, and, and Jay, that's why we have the Tiki Code, you know, the, the, the code of honor, the Tiki Code of respect, the Tiki Code of integrity, empathy. You know, just because you were born with this ability to be a great warrior fighter doesn't mean you knock somebody down. It actually shows more power to pick somebody up when they're down. And you'll notice that, that we kind of gravitate towards those kinds of fighters, those warriors, and that's what you should look for. Someone that stands out as a, as a good character person or needs development and work. And that's what they do. You see, you're going to vote up to 10 times on all the social media. All right, well, to do that, you're going to want to go to warriorisland.info, and he's going to let you vote 10 times. So take advantage of that. Get to that website right now. So Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, YouTube. Vote, vote, vote. We want you to have a voice up to 10 times per device. All right, what can we look forward to next week in Warrior Island? You know what? This has been a, a great night of fights, but, you know, we have... We have one every week, so tune in every week. You have new fighters, new new uh, venues around the world, whether it's Portugal, whether it's London, whether it's different spots in the United States. You know, we would search the world and globe for this. And here's the other thing. You don't just have to vote for fighters in these cages. You can have fighters on YouTube that aren't even in the cage that you can vote for. So even the fighters at home and promoters at home, you can upload videos and fights to us from around the world. And we have wild cards where you can actually make the island and not even be in the cage. Oh my God, amazing. Well, next week, you're not gonna wanna miss it. I wanna personally thank you, Ronan James Jefferson, for putting this together. It's a great vision. You're helping the world. You're helping all these athletes. Thank you so much. I can't wait for next week. You're a great partner, man. <laughs> not once did I try to have to defend any uh, kicks or punches or chokes <laughs> from Mr. Jay Adams, one of the best in the world in decades of commentating, but great to have him here. He's our Jeff Probst. <laughs> we'll see you next time on Warrior Island. Favorite fighter at warrioridland.info